In order to better show you around the graphical user interface or GUI of QGIS, I'm going to actually begin by opening up uh, just a few layers. We're going to do that with this add vector layer. We'll navigate to the directory where uh, the QGIS sample data is. And we will go into this uh, shapefiles folder. I'll select Alaska and then we'll hold down the multiple select button which is either Apple on OS X or Control or Shift on grass, um, Linux or Windows and we will open up Alaska we'll open up this and this and rivers and major rivers we hit open and we'll see them appear over here now in our legend area. Next I'm going to take off all of the layers with the hide all layers button and okay there we go. Now that we've got some layers actually loaded um, I'll start by just talking briefly about the main buttons. Of course you've got your your new save save as open and print buttons. I've just talked to you about the add vector layers and we've got add rasters and we can work with post GIS layers and also WMS layers as well. Once we've actually got the layer loaded and displayed, so we'll, for example, open up the Alaska vector layer, we can do things like zoom in. I can either select an area to zoom in on, or I can simply click and it will zoom in. I'm going to go back to the last zoom level okay and now I can pan around the map by clicking and dragging and then it gets re-rendered okay if I want to zoom out I can just click and zoom I can zoom to the full extent of the area or if I've got certain features selected I can zoom to that selection I can zoom to the layer as well so if I want to zoom to the pipelines layer I can zoom to that now you'll notice that the pipelines don't show up very well okay so what I'll do is if I double click on pipelines I can actually change the outline color maybe something like pink would show up and we can maybe even make them a little bit thicker okay I'll click alright now one of the things in the vector layers we have attribute data so I will actually open the table now if we look here the different categories we've got below um, below surface submerged underground we've got on ground all right so it might be useful to differentiate between the two so we look at this at the category name all right and we'll just keep that in mind we'll double click it again and what we'll, we're going to change the legend type to unique value we're going to set the classification field and we'll classify it and now you'll see that we've got the two now for each one we can select a different color so for the below surface maybe we will set that to a red and the on We'll set to a purple. And we click OK. And now you'll see the underground pipeline is in red. Those aren't showing up all that well again. So what we can do is we can select them both and we can make them thicker. To really show you, I can even make them say outline width is one. 
Okay, now if I zoom to that layer, to the Alaska layer, now you'll see it shows up much more clearly. The Alaska layer is composed of many polygons. The pipeline is actually a line vector and now I'm going to show you the point vectors. So this is the population. We will open the attribute table again and we'll see that this is talking about different buildings, whether it's buildings, settlements, we can scroll down. We can see that these might be interesting to separate and that's under this F code description. So if we remember that, we can double click on it. We'll go unique value again. We'll classify it by that classification field. We'll click classify. Right. We'll make them a little bit bigger. Now for each one, we can actually select different symbols and you might want to expand your window so we have a little better control over the over the symbols. These grayed out ones with the blue outline you can set the color of them. Okay down here. If we select any of these they're just the single color. So for buildings we'll make buildings circles and Purple is fine. Camp, we'll make them squares and we'll make them say that color. Ruins, we'll make them diamonds and that color is fine. Settlements, we'll make them triangles and we'll make them a lovely shade of brown. Okay, we click apply, or okay. Again, that looks quite crowded. What we can do is zoom in, and I, that should show you some of the differences in the symbols more clearly. So it's very clearly, we can see we've got camps out here, a settlement here, buildings here, but what about the ruins? Where can we find ruins? Well, let's zoom back out. We'll zoom to last. If we want to look, identify all the ruins in this vector file, in this point vector file, we can open the attribute table and we can search for ruins in there. There's 17 matching features. Alright, well let's bring them to the top and there they're all shown. Now if we move this out of the way you can see now that we've got all of the rooms showing up as highlighted in yellow. I'm going to close this. We can then right click over here on that layer and I can save the selection as a shape file. Okay, I'm going to go up one level and I'm going to create a new folder and I will call this my name. Now we're going to load a vector. We'll go up one. And you'll see that it's actually called json.shape. So we open the shape file. Now if I shut population layer off, all right, we will double click it and we're going to make these a little bit bigger. 
nice bright color so that you can easily see them. And they were the um, diamonds. Okay. So now we can easily see where they all are. If we want to know more information about features, we can actually click on the Identify Features button. We make sure that the layer that we want to know about is selected, and then we can go and, and click. This brings up this window, and it will give you everything in the attribute table corresponding to what we've select, clicked on. Just to demonstrate that, I'll open up the attribute table, and you can see we've only got the five different categories. Okay. Now again, we can keep clicking on them. If we click outside of it, it'll tell us that there is no features found um, in the active layer at the point you clicked. So for example, if I switch it now to uh, Alaska and click, yeah, it's going to show me the current polygon in which I've clicked. It's going to tell us how many, what the area is. In this case, it's uh, this many square miles. It's also going to derive the area in the units that you've got set for your location, which is part of what your projection is. So I'm going to talk about that. Oh my, I guess I should change that. Pause for the moment.